Once we know exactly how our DNA code functions, we will be able to enhance our bodies. Human life will improve from one generation to the next as we control and accelerate natural evolution. But arrival to mankind is appearing on the horizon, arrival that is evolving much faster. Are people becoming obsolete? A giant electronic brain has started cogitating at the University of Pennsylvania. It's made of vacuum tubes like your radio, and it can add up a column of figures a yard long in a second. It's the world's first electronic computer. Right now, it's solving mathematical problems for the U.S. Army, but who knows, someday a machine like this may check up on your income tax. So imagine the, the human abilities as kind of a landscape with some peaks, which, which, are, which are the things we do well, and some valleys, which are the things we do really, really badly. There are things that we do extremely well, which are things that were important in our survival for, for most of our evolutionary history, things like moving around and socially interacting and, and perceiving the world. And there are things that we have only recently learned how to do, uh, things like general reasoning, an extreme example is arithmetic, where we are very, very, very inefficient. Computers are different. They are universal machines. Uh, with an efficient program, they can do almost any one of these tasks equally well in, in some abstract uh, informational sense. So the uh, skill of computers can be likened to a water level that's, that's uniform. The water level is rising. <laughs> And it's rising at a rate that is about 10 million times faster than the rate at which we evolved those abilities. That and a, and a number of other calculations lead me to believe that uh, the highest peaks will be covered by this rising flood in less than 50 years. But once the level of computer competence has risen beyond uh, the, best the best human engineers, then there won't be any human engineers. There will be... Uh, robotic or computer engineers. We might one day duplicate man, his form, his body, his actions and reactions, carefully engineered for lifelike appearance. Non-biological intelligence is growing exponentially. Biological intelligence isn't really growing at all. Or if it's growing, it's growing at such a slow rate that it's not noticeable. Which is why non-biological intelligence ultimately will become dominant. Yeah, right. It's, it's so it's, 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 it's one zero one. Uh, I mean, one zero 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 one zero or zero zero one. Yeah, that's all. Will computers ever become conscious beings? Computers calculate using zeros and ones. Therefore, many people, among them some scientists, believe that they will never become more than sophisticated calculation machines. The great scientist, Professor Frankenstein, when his monster moved for the first time, without knowing it, he spoke of the absolute distinction between the artificial brain and the human brain. When he said, it's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. So the difference between biological and artificial intelligence can be summed up in one word, life. At least that's what Dr. White believes. It is indeed hard to imagine that one day digital machines created by us will have a consciousness. Ultimately, it literally gets confused until ultimately it falls over onto its butt. There you go. <laughs> but then, why do we think of ourselves as such unique and sacred mechanisms? After all, we are also defined by a digital code, our DNA code. The approach used today in building artificial intelligence is not to try to program conscious beings, but instead to let those robots learn by themselves, to acquire knowledge step by step, just as we do. There's no actual programming done in these things. What we do is we create a neural topology, like um, the way that our nervous network is designed, you know, the brain on top and, and all those little tendrils that go to all our muscles. And then what happens is that because there's no other solution for it, when this thing powers on, it learns to walk. You can actually watch it. When it comes up, it goes completely crazy, okay? And all its legs, it basically comes up in the state of epileptic foot. And then it winds up being able to figure its way out. And as you watch, there, it just learned to walk. 
So it programmed itself in a very short period of time. Most people have always assumed that you're supposed to build a brain and then sort of like a body will fall out of it, right? The thing is, of course, is that well over half the species on the planet have no brain to speak of at all, but they manage to survive and move around very well and very effectively. So what we've done is we've tried to evolve things from the bottom up. And in the process, we have not yet evolved brains, but we have managed to evolve very effective nervous systems. Self-organizing systems such as neural networks can yield remarkable results. Carl Sims made a software program of small cubic creatures that were able to evolve. Those that move the fastest got the right to procreate. But there was always random change built into their program, into their genes, so to speak, in order to make them evolve. And Sims watched the strange creatures that appeared on his computer screen. He also let them compete for a green cube. Then, something extraordinary happened that wasn't programmed. One of the creatures jumped over the green cube and attacked its competitor before going for the cube. Evolution had produced a creature that was the most able to compete, and therefore to survive. It was just a software program, but one that organized itself. One day, very powerful computers may surprise us. First, we say that if a computer could play chess, then it would think like us. And then we get a computer to play chess, and we say, that's really not thinking. And the answer is that we don't really know what thinking is. I would argue that machines do a pretty good job right now at thinking, and um, they don't do as good a job at creating, although we don't really know what creating is. And they don't do a very good job at having a soul, but we don't really know what a soul is. But when we can define it, they do a pretty good job at doing it. 